Welcome to Spotlight. I'm your host, Amita. Join us weekly to get inspired by guests who are going above and beyond to bring about changes in their communities. Our guest today is an inspirational female community leader who wears multiple hats. She's an immigrant success story. She's the current Ward 6 counselor and the budget chair for the city of Markham. It's my honor to welcome back to our show, Councillor Amanda Colucci. Always good to have you here, Councillor. Thank you so much, Amita. Uh -huh. <laughs> you are the recipient of the 2015 RBC Top 25 Immigrant Award, mm -hmm. well deserved. Thank you. So enlighten us, a small business owner, to where you are today. Mm -hmm. How is that? Well, I think that you know it is a very fulfilling uh, journey. I would say, um, you know, just really giving back to the community, serving our community um, as a counselor. Um, you know, it's just really um, it, it's a very fulfilling uh, experience. Um, knowing that you know what I'm doing is really helping a lot of people. Um, I, I think it's truly, truly amazing. Um, obviously, you know, as an entrepreneur as a business owner, um, you know, I have always been, um, you know, engaged in the community and giving back as well, right? So uh, no, not to talk about uh, supporting local events like the Jazz Festival or helping fundraising for Markham Stouffville Hospital. But, um, you know, while I was running the company um, or I, when I owned the company, um, I actually donated a lot of uh, free cleaning services to women who are battling uh, with cancer as well. Mm -hmm. So that's that is just some kind of a, almost like a DNA in me, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's always wanted to, to kind of give back to the community and helping people who are in need. Um, so I think that, you know, this is um, uh, almost like you know, a good uh, bridge to my new role as a, as a counselor that um, you know, now I'm more focusing on the community, helping the residents, um, you know, branching out to um, you know, the, the uh, very diverse community in Markham. So um, it, it is a fantastic experience. Well, uh, uh, the city of Markham is lucky to have you, and the people will have confidence in somebody who's in office who has done the same when you were not in office, mm -hmm. which shows your passion and and your commitment. And mm -hmm. it's not just about you know gaining popularity or the fame; yeah. you're actually making a difference. Absolutely. And uh, it's it's great. You are a resident of Markham yes, for over for two, a long time. Yeah, two decades. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know Markham in and out. That's and right. this also has been shown uh, in your role outside the office, like we were saying, including in your role as a mom. Yes. You know, I understand you have been even part of the your children's uh parents school yes, board. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What yeah. kind of changes did you bring about there? Well, um, I have been uh, you know, involved in the schools and um, I think that you know, one of the major things is, uh, it's funny that this morning I was just talking to a friend, you know, how he has to drop off uh, you know, his his son uh, to a school. And that is something that like, you know, a lot of school parents facing, right? So you mm. know, when they drop off their kids at school and then they find out, it's like, oh my God, like it was a major traffic jam mm. <laughs> around the school area especially in the winter time as well. So I think that like, yo, one of the major concerns with a lot of school parents is uh, the traffic around the uh, the school area, especially uh, you know the drop off and pick up area and and things like that. Um, so you know um, with uh, a lot of uh, work with the uh, city of Markham uh, and the staff, um, you know I was able to help them to solve traffic issue there. Um, it can be very simple, just you know like uh, you know put up some uh, uh, proper signage and um, you know like giving them uh, proper directions such. Just like no U-turn and then you know like with the road um, just basically you'll have more bike lane so that people can actually bike to school as right so promoting your know, walk and bike to school instead of you know dropping off the kids mm. um, and uh, one of the major things that I've done for the school zone area which is those flexible points uh, those signs uh, basically it says that you know this is a school zone and remind people to slow down as they're entering um, to to the school area. 
Mm. Those are the things that you know, I have done uh, for our school community, uh, not just the, the schools um, that where my kids go to, but uh, we piloted that program, um, started with eight schools, and now expanded to all the, um, schools in the city of Markham as well. So, um, so you know, just by um, you know, being a caring parent, <laughs> being very involved in um, you know, the school community, you know, I was not only helping um, you know, the, the schools in my immediate neighborhood, but also helping the schools across the city of Markham as well. That's great. I mean, you are a caring human, I would say, not just, you know, caring parent, because yeah. you have taken it to uh, different uh, levels. You've started at a smaller level, and mm -hmm. now you are here in office, and you're making some amazing changes. Yes. And this year, you are the budget chair for the city yes. of Markham. So we want to find out more about what is your vision in this position. Okay. But before that, it's time for a short break. Sounds great. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to Councillor Amanda Colucci. So yes, this year you're budget chair for the mm -hmm. city of Markham. So tell us more about your vision with this position. Yeah, so uh, last term, uh, I was the uh, vice chair of budget. So, you know, through that experience, you know, I, I gained a lot of knowledge, um, you know, how, um, you know, city of Markham, uh, the budget process work, but more importantly, to understand, you know, each of the department, you know, each of the commission, what they need and, um, you know, according to, you know, what we wanted to achieve in city of Markham, then we will be able to um, to lay out our the budgets accordingly. And obviously, yo, every year we have a large budget to work with. So just to give you an example, uh, 2018, we actually, our the total uh, operating budget plus uh, capital, we're talking about over $450 million, right? Yeah. So this year, we're talking about over 500 million. Whoa. So it is a big budget to, to manage. Now, um, at the same time, uh, we also have a really, really good track record at City of Markham as well. Uh, in both year, 2017 and 2018, we actually, not only that we're able to balance our budget, but we're actually having a surplus as well. Mm, nice. So, you know, okay. having that type of a track record uh, coming into 2019, uh, we wanted to continue to keep our taxes slow mm -hmm. and also to continue on with um, a very, very fiscally responsible manner uh, to manage our budget. Um, to give you some example, which is like every year that we're able to set aside 0.5% for our future um, you know, infrastructure, which is in our life cycle reserve fund um, to basically, um, you know, if there's any repair work that needs to be done, such as you know, a roof you know, um, at the community center or roads need to be repaired, we have money to repair those things. So, and those uh, life cycle reserve fund were good for the next 25 years. Wow. So it is extremely, extremely good uh, budgets that we have. Not only that we're able to balance our budget, we have a surplus, and we also have money set aside enough for the next 25 years oh, for the wow. repairment. So, um, you know, all I can say is, you know, that is something that I wanted to continue to carry forward mm -hmm. uh, in the next four years. And, um, you know, keeping our taxes slow and make sure that, like, you know, um, the city of Markham residents that they don't have to worry about, you know, a major tax hike because they're, you know, we're short of money or something. So that is something that, you know, we wanted to give a peace of mind uh, to our residents. And how we can achieve that is, you know, we run our city in a very, very um, entrepreneurial uh, manner. So it's mm -hmm. almost like you know, running like your, your own business. business. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, before we spend any money or say you know, asking for any budget, we always ask ourselves, is this some kind of a money that we have to, to spend, right? Mm -hmm. Can we find any efficiency in any way to kind of reduce the spending, right? Mm -hmm. So that is very important uh, things that we continue to do and keep asking ourselves, not just get relaxed and, you know, uh, be you know, complacent and say, you know what, we're already doing really good in the past few years. Okay, we can spend anything that we want now. 
not like that at all. So we can, exactly, yeah. yeah. So we'll continue to to just kind of you know keeping really really tight with our budget. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, 2019's uh, budget, we're going to commence uh, our first meeting um, on um, January the 18th, and then we will actually wrap everything up uh, by March. Mm -hmm. So. Cross our fingers. We're going to look forward to a very, very um, you know, responsible and uh, very uh, low tax rate uh, again in 2019. Yeah, I have no doubt uh, the good history will repeat itself. <laughs> what are some of the sectors you think that are most important to focus on for your city? Um, I would say, um, you know, in the next few years, um, you know, there are a few things that we will need to continue to focus on. Uh, number one, which is, you know, continue to attract uh, business investment mm -hmm. in our city. I mean, obviously, you know, that is the growth part, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, jobs and, you know, basically, you know, investing uh, in Markham will create jobs and also will help to make uh, city of Markham a great place uh, to live, work and play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's also to increase the quality of life for our uh, residents here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the one thing. Um, and then the second thing, just like I mentioned before, uh, keeping our taxes low, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is very, very important. It's the bottom line of um, you know, how much tax that you're going to pay, right, uh, yeah. the residents. And then um, uh, the third thing is you know, continue to improve our the, you know, recreational program and making sure that you know, kids and youth would have a place to, to go and you know, have their activities, and also seniors as well, right? So um, you know, those are vulnerable groups, and uh, you know, not to mention about that, but um, you know, also uh, people who are in need, like you know, disabled people, that you know, they they still need um, some kind of uh, uh, recreational parks and uh, things that they will be able to access to. Those are the things that I think is um, you know we, we need to continue to focus on. Um, but personally, one thing that like if I can just name one thing that I really really wanted to focus on is to revisit our current parking bylaw. Because mm -hmm. you know we're a growing mm -hmm. city, mm -hmm. uh, the need of the family has changed, and you know some families that may have like you know two or three cars, but then you know our transit system is not there to support people oh. to taking buses yet. Mm -hmm. So um, you know it's our current bylaw, which is um, you know laid out like 20 years ago. Is it still valid? Mm -hmm. Right. So something that. I wanted to do and um, a, a very extensive uh, consultation um, just to kind of ask our residents, where do you want us to go in terms of parking by law? So there's just something is kind of close to my heart and you know, I, I wanted to, to get it done this year. But I mean, obviously, you know, in addition to that, um, there are also other community needs such as senior housing, right? Uh, affordable housing. Those, there's a lot of things that you know, we really, really wanted to, uh, to do uh, as a whole, you know, council as a whole. Well, it sounds like uh, you're tackling every community, yes. uh, every part of life, every stage of life. Yes. So it's a wholesome plan. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, I'm, I'm just amazed and uh, in awe about the surplus and the reserve funds that you have. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, council, at some point you should write a book to educate <laughs> all of us how we should be doing that because that also applies to our day-to-day -day lives as well. Yes, absolutely, but, yeah. absolutely. So, but that's great, and uh, the city of Markham is lucky to have you for budget chair. Well, and, thank uh, you. Uh, we wish you all the best for this year as well. Thank so, you. So, uh, I want to come to some uh, focus on certain parts of the community, like you just mentioned, mm. the elderly. Uh, the youth. So I just wanted to delve a little bit more into what do you think specific in terms of uh, work for those particular groups. But before that, it's time for a short break. Welcome back to Spotlight. We are talking to Councillor Amanda Colucci. So this is great, such a great vision being the budget chair this year. So uh, as you were mentioning about certain parts of the community, let's focus on the elderly first mm -hmm. and tell us about your work with them. Yeah, so I'm currently on the um, Senior Advisory Committee. Um, actually, you know, have been uh, on that committee for the last four years already. And um, you know, in my ward, there's a lot of uh, seniors, uh, you know, aging population. Like my mom is 85 years old. Mm -hmm. and 
and you know there's a lot of need uh, for the uh, the seniors you know including um, you know because they they don't drive right there's a lot of seniors that in in our area that we don't drive and um, you know they become kind of isolated they yeah. stay home they you know especially winter time that they can't go out and stuff like that so I think that you know um, you know the, the social interactions uh, between seniors is very important and um, you know the other thing that I also kind of um, briefly touch on which is recreational programs mm. right mm -hmm. so um, you know at our community center say for example in my ward at Angus Glen uh, there is an older adults club in that um, in that community center and basically you know what City of Markham is doing is to help uh, these seniors to set up their own club and provide the space to them at a very very low rate and uh, so that they can actually have their activities whether it is line dancing ballroom dancing um, karaoke nice. or badminton right so anything that they need to be stay active and stay healthy um, you know all the way to just you know people hanging out and just sing a few songs and have some good time together, right? Nice. So, and you, you have a passion for the arts, I know that. Yeah, so, that's, yeah. Yeah. so, I mean, you know, like every year, um, you know, I also host uh, events, you know, at the community center, whether it is a New Year celebration or Christmas celebration or summer barbecue. Um, you know, I often invite a lot of seniors to those events and mm -hmm. just to kind of give them an, a venue that they can go out and have fun, right? That's so um, I think that that's really the um, the mental and emotional well-being to help them with that. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, um, you know, um, like I'm a little bit mentioned before, uh, which is the um, uh, housing issue, right? Mm -hmm. So there's something that I'm still, you know, continue to work on is to kind of promote uh, and ask uh, developers to build more uh, senior-friendly housing uh, mm -hmm. in our area, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, to, to kind of, you know, just to address their need that, you know, some seniors may want to be more independent instead of living with their their kids or their family, right? That's true. So, um, so things like this, um, you know, and then transit is another thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how are we going to promote transit uh, to help and, you know, um, have those fare to be more affordable for seniors um, to use transit? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is great, like because as we all grow older, the uh, main thing is that community support, being around others, even though we want to be independent, we need that kind of closeness. And this uh, reduces a lot of issues with mental health as yes. well, in addition to you know promoting physical health. So this yeah, is yeah. great uh, in yeah. terms of your vision and what you're doing for the seniors. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to the other extreme, mm -hmm. what about for the youth? Yeah, well, yeah. that's a good question too. Yeah. Um, not only that I have an 85-year-old elder mom, um, I also have two teenagers as well. One is 16, the other one is 13. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, you know, there is a, a group of uh, youth in my ward that, that they actually act as, as uh, advocates, um, you know, for, for me, um, you know, advocates for, for the youth. And in fact, I think that like, you know, the, what the youth or um, the challenges that they're facing is mm -hmm. very similar to, to the elderly, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, transit, right? Because they don't drive, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. And obviously, you know, they, they're a little bit more active than, uh, than, than the seniors. Uh, but I think that, you know, um, one thing that they, they keep telling me is about mental health. Mm -hmm. So apparently, um, you know, in uh, youth nowadays that they have more stress. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, talk about my, about my my daughter, you know, like, you know, she's facing um, a, a choice that, you know, she's going to university uh, not this coming up year, but like she's in uh, grade 11, mm -hmm. but she'll be going to university soon. Mm -hmm. So just kind of going through that phase, um, you know, facing all the, uh, you know, uh, decisions that, you know, one and uh, adults that we have to face, but they're still emotionally that they're not equipped with it. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, from the emotion side, emotional side and the mental side, that, you know, there's more support that needs to be given to them. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, one thing that, you know, we talked about, you know, as a school council is that can we bring more seminars and, you know, have speakers to talk about mental health uh, mm -hmm. for, for the youth? Which is great. Uh, that, that 
tells me that you've been invited as guest speakers to yes. speak to them. <laughs> and you're such an amazing role model for that. How has that experience been? Well, you know, um, in the past, uh, you know, I have uh, spoke in uh, college and uh, high school uh, just to talk about, you know, like, um, a, a very wide uh, variety of uh, subject, um, you know, anywhere from, you know, um, be your own boss, right, like, you know, entrepreneur experience, uh, immigrants experience, and also to share some, you know, personal experience, um, you know, um, on, you know, youth and, you know, like, what what challenges that youth are facing. And I think that, you know, that just by doing so, um, again, it's kind of going giving back to the community, um, you know, by sharing my own experience, by sharing uh, some of the knowledge that I have, that is a way that I can actually help others to deal with what challenges that they're facing. So um, it is incredible. <laughs> That's amazing, Councillor. Well, I'm so proud to be sitting next to such a dynamic leader. Of, Thank you. Uh, you know, who uh, delves into, like I said, every aspect of mm -hmm. your community. So honestly, the city of Markham is lucky to have you. Yeah, thank and, you very uh, much. Thank you uh, for coming down today, taking time out of your busy yeah. schedule to talk to us and enlightening us about your vision for what's coming up for Marco. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that was Councillor Amanda Colucci, who has inspired us to help our communities towards progress. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Continue to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and write to us at spotlight at ethnicchannels.com. Until next week, this is Amita signing off, encouraging you to support our community leaders. Mm -hmm.